The Chavetz Chaim. Chavetz Chaim was once uh, in a town, a man came over to him and wanted to give him sholem. Chavetz Chaim refused to give him his hand, which was strange. It's not the sort of thing that you associate with Chavetz Chaim. Refused to give sholem. And the man obviously was uh, upset in this rebbe. What is why? And he said to him, do you remember Label Bronstein? Label Bronstein? Yeah, in your shtetl, it's Label Bronstein. You don't remember him? Yeah, oh, now, yeah, he remembers. Label Bronstein was a very bright boy. Very bright boy. Uncontrollable. Uncontrollable. Troublemaker. Mechutzev. His parents couldn't handle him. And his uncles couldn't handle him. His grandparents couldn't handle him. Nobody could handle him. And finally, the yeshiva sent him away, and he left. And the Chavetz Chaim said to this man, you were the Rosh HaKol. You were the Rosh HaKol. You had a responsibility. You didn't do anything about Label Bronstein. Label Bronstein left his home. He left his town. He left Yiddishkeit. He changed his name to Lev Trotsky. And he became the number two man to Lenin. He became the number two man to Lenin. Stalin was the number three. Stalin plotted behind his back. Eventually he got him removed from power. 15, 20 years later, he had him assassinated. Trotsky took, went into exile in Mexico City. And somebody came with an axe and split his skull open. Label Bronstein was in your town. You were the Rosh HaKohol. What did you do about him? And because you didn't even try, look what happened. Inside each of us, there is that hunger. But how do you bring it out? I saw an article just a couple of days ago. Somebody wrote... I don't remember his name, lives in the five towns, a modern Orthodox, but what is it's not important. What he wrote was this. He said, he was a Talmud in Brooklyn TA many years ago when there was still a Brooklyn TA. And his Maggie Shear was a, a survivor, maybe from Shanghai, he doesn't say Shanghai, but uh, caustic and sarcastic and strict and this, and this young man, he was 14 or 15 years old, he lost his mother, Leolena, to cancer. And he was, sitting, he was sitting in class, no interest, depressed. And the Rebbe looked at him, and he closed the Gemara, and he called him out into the hall. And he said, there's something wrong, what's wrong? And he says he, he burst into tears. And he said he lost his mother and what he's going through at home. And this tough, strict, sarcastic Rebbe embraced him, hugged him, kissed him, and said, I'll take care of you. And he did, and for the rest of this, of this man and succeeding years, he was like a father to him. And this person who wrote the article, he says people complain. They complain about abuse. He, what brought this up was the, uh, the basketball coach in Rutgers who was fired because he was too tough with his players. And he says there, there's more than one way to look at it. Here's a rabbi who was tough, and the class didn't like him. But to me, to me, he was like a father. And if he had not been like that to me, I would have left Yiddishkeit completely. I would have dumped the whole thing. But he saved me. He saved me. And I have a family and I have children who are going to yeshivas. Freydi, modern Orthodox, what difference does it make? But he was saved for Yiddishkeit. Not many people can do that. We all know that there are problems. Yeah, I tell you, I was... Several years ago, I was near Eretz Not long after Sukkot, I was at a Shever Brachas. And I was sitting next to a, a young 
junior mashgiach in one of the major yeshivas. And he said to me, Rebar and Leib, Rebar and Leib Steinman had made an asif for that Cholamite Sukkis of Mechanchim, Magidei Shir, Mashgichim from all over the country to talk about the problems of the younger generation. And this, this uh, young Mashgich said to me, he said in the, uh, among the attendees, there were three groups, three attitudes. Most of them said, yeah, the Moderna, they have these problems. We, Baruch Hashem, we don't have these problems. That was one group. The next group said, yeah, I mean, the, in our Moises, you also have Baruch Hashem, in my Moises, we don't have it. But there are Moises that have it. And the smallest group of all said, they have it, and the other Chredish Yeshivas have it, and we have it. We all have it. We all have it. And we're in denial, we're in denial, and we have to deal with it. The Gedal Yashainin is not in denial. He's not in denial. He deals with it. How does he deal with it? He understands the Talmud. And don't get me wrong, Rabbi Sai. This is not a condemnation of every single person who's in Chinuch. Because most people cannot. They don't have the temperament, they don't have the personality. Most people cannot deal with it. Can all parents deal with all problems of all children? No. Doesn't mean that they don't care. Of course they care. We all care. But you need a special, you need a special ability, a special personality to, to ignite a rava and to ignite a, a hunger for Tyra, to convince Bachram that there's no greater joy than being Jewish. And he has it. He has this ability, and he does it. He does it. He might have an easier life if he were a Magid Shir in, in, in an established yeshiva. He wouldn't have to go around raising money. He wouldn't have to deal with problems. He wouldn't have to face parents who are in denial, parents who say that they're not the failures, the children are the failures. And don't we all know? Don't we all know? I'm going to send my, my bacha to such a yeshiva. Uh, my daughter will never get a shidduch if they find out that she has a brother in such a yeshiva. We're bringing karbonas. And not karbonas to the rabbi Shalom. We're bringing karbonas to our own self-esteem. And here's a man who fights that trend, who fights that trend. I said at the beginning, Rabbi said, that, that, that we don't realize how much we accomplish when we help, when we take part in such a mercy. Let me tell you what I mean. Let me tell you a story. This happened in one of the, uh, one of the several yeshivas in, in North Jersey. It was in the middle of the summer, warm weather, before the Ben Azmanin. And a group of boys were outside, and, and most of them were still wearing their jackets, and a girl comes by, dressed the way American girls dress in the summertime, provocatively dressed to attract attention. And she saw one of these boys, instead of turning around to look at her, turned away. And she was upset. You know, that's insulting. And she asked him, well, what's, what's going on? What's the story here? and they learn Torah, and they stay away from such things. And she became curious. She became curious. And she said she's, she wants to learn more about this, this brand of Judaism. She was Jewish, had no idea that there was such a thing in, in the world. And she began to, uh, to inquire and to read and to talk to people. And she became a Balas Shura. The Baisai, this, this Bacher, all he did was turn around one day. And he's going to come to the Elama Amis, Achamev Asrin. And they're going to show him, they're going to show him a family, children, grandchildren, maybe grandchildren, maybe great grandchildren, from Eden B'nai Torah. And they're going to say, they're going to say, that's, that's on your account. 
That's on your account, he said. I don't know what you're talking about. You once turned around on a hot summer day in North Jersey. You turned around, and because of you, a girl was influenced to become a Baalist Shuva. And all these children and grandchildren, grandchildren and great grandchildren, that's all to your credit. Goodbye, side. Can we afford, can Claudia Yisrael afford to lose Bachrim to the street? And we are losing Bachrim to the street. I mean, we have someone like the Gedal Yishenin. Goodbye, side. Can we afford, can Claudia Yisrael afford to lose Bachrim to the street? And we are losing Bachrim to the street.